Hi, I'm Adam, the Makerspace Coordinator here at the Wando Mount Pleasant Branch Library. Today, we're going to learn how to put together one of these fabric book cozies from one of our Take and Makes. Inside the kit, you'll have four different pieces of fabric. Two of them are muslin. Two of them are a print fabric. Two more are felt. And then the last two are smaller pieces of muslin. The larger pieces are all seven inch by nine and a half inches. Here's some of the things that you'll have to provide. Sewing pins, scissors, and if you have a sewing machine, you will need that, or you will have to use some sort of hand sewing needle along with thread. The first thing you'll need to do is pin your muslin fabric to your felt and just lay it on top of it. If you are using at a different date, maybe you want to make this at home another day, some kind of print fabric on the inside, you would make sure the print is on the bottom and the wrong side is touching the felt. But we're using muslin and that doesn't matter right now. So we're going to take our sewing pins and pin together the felt and the muslin. Okay, so that's pinned. So that's our first piece. We also should go ahead and pin the second piece of felt to the other piece of muslin just while we're here. Once again, you put the muslin on the bottom and the felt on top and then pin it together. So we've got these two finished and then we're going to pin together our print fabrics. So you'll make sure that these have their right sides together. And if you don't know what that means, the right side is the side that looks right. The wrong side is the side that looks wrong. So when you have a printed fabric and it's nice and pretty and you flip it over and it looks kind of washed out, that's the wrong side. All right, so we now have three rectangles. They're all seven by nine and a half inches and they're all pinned to their brothers pretty much. So we're gonna start in the top right, work our way down to the left and back up and stop in the top left. Okay. As you sew, sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna start by locking my stitch. Now I'm gonna let it go. If your machine has a little bit of trouble, try adjusting the stitch length to about three. We're not using any kind of special needle in the sewing machine. Right now I've got a universal one in there. So don't worry about that. And at the end, lock your stitch. Then we're gonna take this one off the machine and go on to the next one. So now that we have our three blocks sewn together, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna trim the edges just enough to where they're not gonna make it difficult on us when we put them together. So probably about half of this we're gonna cut off. So if it was a quarter, now it's an eighth. Thank you. 
Also make sure for the corners, snip them a little bit. That way they poke out better in the final product. Do this for the rest of the ones that you have. The next step is to take our two pieces that we've sewn together that are the muslin and felt and then sew them together. We're going to take one and put it felt side down and the next one on top of it with the felt side up. So the two pieces of muslin will be touching. Then we're going to take our pins and pin this together. Now definitely for this part, you want to go ahead and change on your machine the stitch length to probably three, just because this is so thick. So we start by locking. And then we go. Once we finish sewing these two pieces together, we're going to trim the edges just a little bit. We don't have to do it as much. Once we've trimmed this piece right here, we're going to flip it inside out with the muslin being on the outside and the felt being on the inside. Once that's been flipped inside out, we're going to put it inside the print fabric. And the way we did it, if you remember, the print fabric has the right side on the inside. Before we sew this piece together, we need to make the little tab that shuts over the top of it to keep our book from sliding out. This is where the two smaller pieces of muslin come in. We're going to take them and pin them together with a couple sewing pins. And we're going to sew just like we did before starting at the top right, going down, then going left, and then going up and stopping in the top left. Because this is smaller, it's best to try to go for an eighth of an inch for your seam allowance. When you're done sewing, remove the pins and go ahead and trim the edges on this one as well. Just a little bit. Then we're going to flip this one inside out. If you have difficulty flipping it, use a turning tool. If you don't have a turning tool, get a pencil or a pen with a cap on or even a chopstick and that should help you. If you have an iron at home, this is where you would want to press this down to be flat. If you don't have an iron, you should be fine, but that's an option if you do have one. So we're going to take the piece we just sewn and we're going to take our big bulky piece and we're going to put this finished side first into our pouch. It's going to go between the print fabric and the muslin, not between the muslin and the felt. So I'm going to take this, drop it in, and we want 
probably about half an inch showing. Go through all those layers and pin it. Not through the whole thing. Then we're gonna take more pins and pin around the lip of this envelope. Once you've finished pinning, we're gonna move over to the sewing machine. And we're gonna fit it over carefully. And ideally you start sewing right before the tab. We're gonna go almost all the way around and leave a good sized three inch gap. That way we can turn it. I would also set your stitch length to three. Make sure to lock your stitch. When you've stopped, go ahead and flip this inside out. And then we're gonna push this muslin side into the print fabric. Once you've turned it, we're gonna take the one edge that wasn't sewn in, the part where we flipped it through. Once we're finished flipping that, we're gonna look at the raw edge that we flipped it through. We're gonna do our best to tuck this in a quarter of an inch, pin it, or if you have an iron at home, you can press it and it'll stay in place. And then we're gonna sew around the top. We're gonna to do a top stitch. We're gonna start, lock our stitch, and go. On these areas where there's a big seam, it can be a bit tricky, so go slow on those. And don't force yourself to go too fast. I have broken many a needle doing that. We're gonna lock our stitch once we've gotten to where we started. And we are almost done. You can go ahead and see how it's gonna look. The last thing and only thing left to do is to attach the Velcro. Doesn't matter which side of the Velcro you do, but you're gonna take one of those and kind of see where this falls. That way you can tell where to put the second piece. I usually put the second piece of Velcro about an inch down the bag. That way I can accommodate for thicker books. And I like to sew on the Velcro along the top and along the bottom. I don't do the sides. So I'm gonna go along the top, lock my stitch, Tell it to go. Stop, lock my stitch. Take it out. Reposition. Get in the bottom. So lock my stitch. Go along the bottom. Stop, lock my stitch. I'm gonna trim some of these to get them out of my way. Take that other piece. Remember where we marked it. It's about an inch down from the middle. We're gonna put it back on the machine. Lock our stitch. And go. Lock 
lock it. Do the same thing for the bottom. Clean it up. And there we go. Here's when I completed at an earlier date. Fits in there nice. And I used a different pattern fabric for the inside. I hope you've all enjoyed this. Hopefully you'll take this take and make and if you have any questions, give me a call or email me at wandomakermanager at ccpl.org.